Hello, this is Dr. Stephanie Monaz. I serve as the Director of Clinical and Academic Research at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. And this short presentation provides guidance for the development and submission of a research review abstract for the MUIH Research Symposium. If you haven't already, please be sure to review the overall guidelines that provide some information about abstract development and submission for all types of abstracts for the MUIH Research Symposium. This presentation is specifically for those who are submitting a research review abstract. A research review can take several forms, but it is basically an overview of the existing literature that is already published regarding a specific research question or research area. You might be submitting a, a um, systematic review, it might include a meta-analysis, or it might be a narrative review. All of those types of reviews are fine. You want to make sure that your research is actually a review if you're using this particular submission type. So starting out, you're going to have, of course, your title, and that should be about 10 to 12 words. When it makes sense, you're going to include whatever the population or intervention or exposure um, or the outcomes are that you're investigating with your review. So if you're uh, you know, looking at this particular intervention in this population and all of the research related to that, that's going to uh, you want to make sure that that's in your title. In some cases, it's a more general area that you're investigating, and so that information would be provided. Uh, you're, you're not going to include any findings or results of your literature review in your title. It's going to be more about the question. And you want to make sure that you identify the type of uh, review that it is. So whether it's a narrative review, scoping review, systematic review, meta-analysis, that should be in your title. Follow proper convention for capitalization. And here's an example at the bottom of the slide. And then comes the author information. So your authorship is going to be in order of involvement. Your first author is always going to be the author who spearheads the project and takes the, the preliminary role in making it happen. And that'll be followed in kind in sort of descending order of involvement. The only exception to that is that sometimes there's a more senior researcher who's providing oversight and mentoring on the project, and they might appear last. In this example, you'll see that there are five author, or actually there are, yeah, five authors. Four of them are from the Department of Integrative Health Sciences. We don't have an affiliation for the second author, but that should be, that should have a two superscript. And then you would see a number two below that provides the, the affiliation for that author. So you're going to have some authors that are, at least one author is going to be affiliated with MUIH, but you might have some authors that are outside of MUIH. UIH and they should be listed as well. And in the, the form, there will be a place for the affiliation of each author. And then comes the background. And there you're going to describe sort of the, the nature of the problem, why this review is necessary. Why, why is it that a review on this particular topic should be done? And the, below you see an example of that. Then comes the objectives. What it is that you set out to do by conducting this literature review. And in this case, there are two objectives. You may just have one objective, and that's fine. In some other conferences, you might see that the objectives in the background are in one section. In our template, they're separated. And then are going to come the method. So that depends on what type of review you have. So if you did a systematic review, then there's going to be really detailed information in the methods about exactly what your criteria were for deciding on the studies, what types of studies. So for example, did you only include randomized controlled trials, or did you include any clinical study or interventional study? What databases did you search? You know, over what time frame? So if you did that kind of a search, then and all of that information would need to be listed in the search that you in the example that you see below it talks about more generally the databases and the terms that were used and then how papers were found but uh, this was not a systematic review so it's not going to have as much detail about how the methods were con conducted and then you're going to find your results so the results should 
outline the number of papers that you found, whether, you know, how many of them met criteria, you know, what the screening process yielded, and then the quality of those papers, did they, you know, usually there's a rubric that's used to determine what the quality is, and in some cases, only papers that meet a certain quality are going to be included, so you want to make sure that you have all of that information in there, and your results should really be just what you found. Um, so there's not going to be a whole lot of interpretation here. It's going to be a, written in a more neutral way, you know, from a scientific perspective. And then comes the conclusion. And in this conclusion, you're going to talk about the main findings and then perhaps um, what void this fills, what the use of this research might be, <clears throat> so how it might inform policy or perhaps clinical practice. If you have questions or would like additional support, please see your uh, leadership in your program or your department to find out what they have available for you. Certainly bring a draft of your abstract to the abstract writing workshop so the support staff there can provide you with guidance and help you refine it um, and improve it. And if you have any questions about the submission process itself, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing your submission.